Thermo Fisher Scientific's brand new GC Orbit Trap technology is right behind me. I'm here to join some leading experts as they see it for the first time. With proteomics, you've got this massive problem with dynamic range. I mean, in serum, you've got albumin up at millimolar levels, and then you've got you know signaling the cytokines and stuff like that that are down at sort of 10 to the minus 12 per mole and all this kind of stuff. But you know they're there because you've got the genome sequence that tells you that there is at least the potential for the transcription of this compound, and it could be there. With the metabolome, you don't have that. When we got the first GC, and Stefan started running some samples on it, and we could see a chromatogram that looked to me like a fairly low resolution mass spectrum. You know, it's, it's that, that kind of level of really nice baseline separated peaks, the massive peak capacity, one to two second peaks, but it's fantastic. And I think coupling that with the GC Orbitrap gives you the ability to separate all these difficult to separate isomers, or at least some of them, and the mass accuracy that you need to get better identifications and also you've got access to the NIST libraries. And NIST libraries are low resolution, but they're massive. But I think this gives us the first opportunity to really try to run metabolomics in a kind of proteomic style way, where you, where you get confidence in identification because you've got the libraries to do it. It's the power of, of confidence. So we picked some stuff that we thought would sort of showcase the three things that we generally use metabolomics for, um, which I'd say is untargeted metabolomics, targeted metabolomics, and isotope tracer experiments. So the three sets of samples we've run are uh, parasite steroids, uh, looking at the effect of uh, mutation on the steroid profile of, of a particular parasite. Um, we've got, again, the same parasite looking at isotope tracer studies. And finally, we've got uh, some samples from a student uh, between me and the, the head of proteomics at Glasgow, Richard Birchmore, and we're looking at tracing, tracking time of death uh, in, well, eventually in human bodies, but uh, at the moment these are rat samples. I think what this instrument allows us to do is to kind of take the brakes off so we can look at we can do that untargeted analysis, we can look for the things that we're interested in using extracted iron chromatograms, and even if we want to do the targeted analysis, uh, but it also lets us do the untargeted stuff. And the accurate mass lets us get that isotope fidelity, the, the, the good assignments to elemental formulas and things like that, that we really need to do the structural information and, and get more information about what we're doing and what we've got. What I think it's going to be really good for is, is, is bringing metabolomics into sort of a more proteomics era where there, there's a sort of standardized method and everybody's kind of happy for, with that as a starting point. So mass spectrometry really is the Swiss army knife of the analytical field, really. You, you can use it for so many different things and it has so many different capabilities and especially something like an orbit trap which has accurate mass and a wide trapping capability and good sensitivity and good dynamic range. It's, it's, it's a, it gives you more tools on your, tool, on your Swiss Army knife, basically. And I think that's really powerful. I was quite skeptical as to, you know, it, it, it sounds like a kind of, let's just stick this on this instrument and, and we'll see what it happens, we'll see what happens. But actually I've been, I'm really, really surprised and impressed how well it's worked. Uh, I think it's one of those things that, we, I mean, we've had two or three days with the instrument and so we haven't really pushed it to its limits, but already what we're seeing is that it, that, that increase in resolution, I'm, I'm very familiar with our orbit traps on the LC side, no, so that increase in chromatographic resolution coupled with the, the resolution of the orbit trap and the, the accurate mass are really giving us a lot more than we previously did, and it, it gives us that capability to work out the structure of things, to, to look more deeply into the, the, the the chemical formulas and the chemical structures that we deal with in the small molecule side that we weren't previously able to do. And I, I think that's really cool.